I don't know if you've noticed this, but money has become an all-consuming obsession so for so many of us, and it feeds anxiety, jealousy, pride, and greed. In our efforts to master money, what I'm learning is that it often ends up mastering us. But here's the great news. Jesus came to set us free in every area of our lives, including our relationship with money. Jesus emphasized that how we view money really reveals the condition of our heart. In Matthew 6, 21, he said, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And this verse really challenges me to examine my priorities. How am I using my time, my talent, and my treasure? It's also crucial to note that Jesus didn't condemn wealth itself, but rather the improper attitude toward it. See, it's the love of money rather than the love for God that is the root of all evil. And if we're not careful, our wealth can become an obstacle to knowing the heart of God making us self-reliant and distracting us from God's very best for us. In the parable of the rich fool, Jesus highlighted a man who stored up earthly wealth but was not rich toward the things of God. And the lesson is clear. We are to use our wealth, whether we have a lot or a little, for God's glory and the good of others. Jesus also taught us the power of generosity that breaks us free from wealth's destructive potential. See, here's what I'm learning. True freedom comes when we believe that God, and only God, will provide all of our needs. And this belief allows us to let go of the anxiety of striving to get what the world says we need to be happy, and it replaces it with a deep contentment in the goodness and in the character of God. In Matthew 6, verses 25 to 34, Jesus taught us not to worry about our lives, pointing to the birds and the lilies. He said, look, God provides for them, and he reminded us that we are more valuable than them to him. By seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, God promises that all of our needs, not our wants, which can be destructive, all of our needs will be met. Jesus assures us that God knows exactly what you need, and He wants to take care of you. And so in summary, Jesus viewed money as a tool to be used wisely and generous, generously, not an idol to be worshipped. You see, our attitude toward money reflects our relationship with God and our priorities. And so by placing our trust in God and practicing generosity and living with an eternal perspective, we can actually align ourselves with Jesus, his teaching, and as a result, experience the fullness of life he promised. What I'm learning is that true wealth is devoted in a, found in a heart devoted to God, in the richness of our relationships and in the eternal treasure that awaits us in our heavenly home. And that is the truth for us. And it's also a stepping stone to becoming who we were created to be.